Hello there, welcome to this guide where we'll be focusing on the three pay stats and cons consistency stat of accuracy and basically seeing how much an investment in these in terms of you know development actually has to say in terms of race pace. To test this out we've used an editor and as you can see from Verstappen here we changed all his stats to 80, we're going to be using the Red Bull because it's, it's the quickest car and the idea here is very simple. We're going to be taking these four stats uh, and in order raise them by 20 points each to the maximum, do a test run, and basically do that for every stat, compare lap times, and see how much you gain or potentially lose by raising one stat over another. Now, the way that we're going to have to do this is that we're going to do it in practice, because confidence is going to be messing with the results, so we don't really have any choice but to try it out in practice itself. So with that in mind, why are we doing these four stats? Well, they're basically the four stats that have to do with pace, Control has to do with, uh, well, accidents, how likely you are to make a mistake. Overtaking and defending, these are kind of hard to quantify because, again, it's overtaking and defending. Adaptability has to do with running the wrong tire for, well, the track conditions, so that would require rain to test. And smoothness will probably be its own thing because it's going to require a little bit more expensive te extensive testing and be a bit of a longer video. So for this video, we'll be focusing on cornering, braking, reactions, and accuracy and how much, as, as I said, a 20 point or so increase is going to have to save your lap times. Basically, we'll do a run and practice. Uh, I'll be showing at the end of the video how exactly we do that run. But generally, we're doing three 15 minute runs. We'll be picking the best lap times from those runs and we'll be comparing them to, well, each run. And as I said, we'll be increasing the skill by 20. So for the first run, we'll run everything at 80 to get a baseline. Second run, increase cornering to 100. Third run, increase breaking to 100 while reducing cornering back to 80. And again, we're basically going to do that for all stats, and we'll see which stat is the most efficient. So as I said, I'll show how exactly we are going to do this right now, and then we'll go into the results. The way that we're going to do this is that we're going to do it in practice, so we don't get, you know, conflicting information due to confidence. We're going to be using soft compounds. We are going to use setups that are perfect, basically 100% uh, optimal for both drivers. And we are going to be going attack and push. Potentially, uh, potentially the only like negative effect of this would be that the gains might look smaller than they would be in reality. But since attack mode is what I use in most races, we're going to go with this. Uh, we're going to go with push so, well, we can get the improved lap times. And we're just going to go to the limit here to test and see what kind of gains we can get. And with that, we are going to go ahead and manage the practice. Um, the strategy here is going to be pretty straightforward. We're going to send Perez out first, and we're going to wait a little bit before we send Verstappen so that we get a little bit of a gap to, well, keep him behind Perez. Now we're going to do three stints, we're going to do about 15 minutes on each stint, and we're going to be basically taking the, I think, three best lap times from these stints, and that should be uh, good enough to give us a baseline to work with, I think. In the event of, say, a yellow flag, well, yellow flags aren't that big of a deal. In the event of a safety car, or virtual safety car, we might restart the session if it takes a lot of uh, blood out of it. But in general, it shouldn't be a problem. And again, we are going to have lap times here where we are kind of slow behind other cars. That is why we're going to be picking the three fastest ones rather than, say, do all of them. And that should give us, as I said, a good baseline in this case because we are running the AD overall. Uh, drivers but it should also be uh, a decent way of doing things now we have actually got through the first stint so we'll just go ahead and call our boys in and we're gonna get put on some new tires and then we're gonna send them out again for that second run that's can see here Paris said his three optimals uh Verstappen should do the same he might even hit four so the second stint they might have a slight discrepancy if we uh, let them run too long but we'll try and avoid that when we run the differences. But of course, the other two stints should make up for that. So I wouldn't be too concerned. Currently, they are running a little bit uh, away from each other. But that's fine. Now, keep in mind, in practice, for those of you who worry about DRS, we can use DRS at every line, even if we aren't in, uh, in DRS distance to a car. So DRS is going to be used at every straight here, no matter if you're behind a car or not. Other cars will really just slow you down. That's all they will do. So do keep that in uh, in mind here. Yeah. Okay. So as you can see, Verstappen is getting close to Paris' times, so we might actually have hit a baseline here. 
But we're still going to go ahead and, uh, you know, allow them to do all of their laps. Then we'll see where we end up. We are going to do, again, one more stint. So we'll allow them to finish these laps. There we are. And we are going to go ahead now and call both cars in and put them on some new tires. Then we'll do a final stint. We could, of course, do four stints, but I think I think we will do four stints in the event that we don't have representative lap times. Let's say that we have two lap times that are close to each other, and then we have another one that is, say, three times off. In that case, we'll probably do the fourth stint. But after three stints, if we have enough representative lap times, we're not just not going to do that. Again, we could, of course, do more stints, more practices to get a little bit, uh, you know, more accurate data. But I think this will give us a very good baseline of what we can expect in terms of uh, driver improvement from getting stats. So let them run this final stint and we'll see where we're at. And I'm going to skip the other <laughs> the other tests, basically. So after this, we'll be going directly to the results of uh, this test itself. And as I said earlier, Smoothness, I think, will need to be its own thing to see exactly the uh, the gains and losses from that. And towards the end, they're actually improving quite massively, as you can see. Also, if a lap time is super quick, we might we might consider not using it, but we'll see here what we have in terms of representative lap times once we hit the, the 15 minute mark. And honestly, judging by this, we might actually send them out once again because there is a two uh two thousandths of a difference so let's just have a quick look at on what we got in terms of lap times for the stappen 33.7 got held up here 33.9 so yeah we don't really have very very many uh what's gonna call it representative lap times for the stappen 34.0 33.9 33.7 that's basically it Ferris did set a uh, pretty good lap here with the l flag 33.4 but this does seem to be more of an outlier, as you can see. It has a 33.8, 33.9. Uh, we are looking for kind of average here. And that kind of matches up with what Verstappen was doing. So I think this is an outlier. I don't know how he pulled this off. Gained four tenths here. Gained a full second here compared to his earlier run. Four tenths if you look at that one. Uh, but yeah, I think we are going to be not using this lap. Again, this is an outlier in the other direction. It's way too quick for anything else he's done this session. It's a uh, yellow flag included. There's four tenths here. So that lap we are not going to be using. So with that in mind, I think we actually do have representative laps now. And I'll be going ahead. Again, the way the way that I look at this is this isn't a natural lap. It's not a result of his skills. It's a result of something external, particularly also because of the yellow flag. So that is how we'll be doing the, the tests. If they don't have enough representative lap times, kind of like what's happened there, running six tenths behind Paris, but then again, Paris can't even replicate this if he tried. So I think we are happy with the the current uh, the current lap times there, and we'll use this as our baseline. Again, it is a bit confusing probably uh, why I'm checking out the best time, but it is just so much different from the average times that he's had that we just can't use it for this test. All right, so as you can see, here are the results that we ended up with with the testing. The overall baseline here ended up being, well, pretty equal for both of them, but Verstappen's numbers were a bit uh, wonky. Uh, Paris actually had the same stat, uh, same lap time twice, which is 8.56, 8.63. Pretty consistent. Uh, Verstappen had one very quick lap, two a bit slower laps, but honestly, the baselines aren't that far away from each other, and I think that the Red Bulls here with 80 overall would have a baseline of about 33.9. Well, maybe 33.880 with what we were doing. So it's not too surprising. It's pretty much in line. Next up, we do put a corner into 99, keeping everything else at 80. And as you can see, Verstappen improves his times immediately. Runs around 33.7 for the most part. Same for Paris. And generally, in terms of the average gain here, it's about 1 to 2 tenths. So 20 points, basically, or 19 in this case, into cornering would give you about 2 one to two tenths uh, per lap in terms of gain. Uh, of course, this could be different for other tracks, but we're using Bahrain for this test, so not too shabby. Breaking next, and it's probably still king, honestly. Um, we did again, we turned down cornering to 80, we up breaking to 99. And as you see from my staff in there, he starts running 33.4, probably kind of an outlier, but he basically had another what was 5.39, I think it was. So it's not too far off, actually. Basically, 33.5 for Verstappen, 
33, 5, 6, and 7 for Paras. So the baselines are kind of weird here, but generally I'd say that the average would probably be 33.5 for Verstappen, 33.6 as you see for Paras. So braking is still very, very powerful. Probably 2 to 3 tenths minimum, maybe even 2 to 4. Uh, because again, it's kind of harder to test it in this game, but braking does still seem to be pretty good to invest into. Now reactions. Uh, Verstappen had kind of an outlier there with 670, but we kept it in. It wasn't too bad. Especially not when you, consider, uh, when you compare it to Checos at uh, 33 sevens, 33 eight. So they're all basically within what you kind of expect. Which means that 33 7, 33 7 for both. This is the closest it's basically been for these tests. So again, reactions is uh, not too much of a gain if everything taken into consideration. Baselines were basically 33.88. So it's about a tenth gained from 20 points, but it also does help with getting up the line quicker. So depending on that, it might be actually what you want to go for. Accuracy kind of did more than I expected, I'll be honest. Uh, 33 7, 33 8s. For the most part, basically uh, kind of improve the time a little bit if we use 33.8 as a baseline. Probably going to gain less than a tenth though with the investment, but it did make everything way more way more consistent in terms of lap times. It did close down that gap uh, from the well highest highs to lowest lows and generally probably is worth investing into. Now when you think about these four stats in particular, I think the, again, breaking has the biggest gain. But I think what happens was a little bit lucky there. Probably should have uh, crossed out that one as the outlier. So I'd say probably you're going to be gaining two to three tens on braking, uh, one to two tens on cornering and reactions, and a little bit less than a tenth on accuracy. But they have rebalanced the stats a little bit more. It's not as bad as last year. And again, this is with 20 points. So the difference in the stat you gain isn't that massive. And I kind of like that. It shouldn't be. But at the same time, if these are, I would expect these to be track dependent. So depending on the track, what might be most important might change. So honestly, for these four drive stats, I don't think it matters too much what you invest into. So in terms of what you want to go for, in terms of your driver development, let's just have a quick look at that before we end this video. With what we just learned in terms of what we want to develop, just purely based on uh, pace stats, it's probably going to be uh, this one, pace for short runs. Comes with three of the stats, cornering, braking, and accuracy, missing reactions, but it's still a good one to potentially focus on. The only other thing I want to also say here before we end this video is that, again, pace is probably going to be best, like from a development perspective. Uh, but do keep in mind that um, smoothness might be a hidden jewel this year, is what basically my next text, my next, next test is going to be. And don't, uh, again, they have rebalanced it, it's looking good. So honestly, I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong in terms of how you focus on your driver stats, but I'll be having a look into adaptability uh, down the road. I'll be having a look into smoothness and we'll see if uh, smoothness, as I said, might be the hidden jewel in the rough this year. But so yeah, braking, probably the best uh, stat still, just slightly. Then comes cornering, reactions, ac accuracy. So hope you learned a little bit from this video. Not really any, you know, news for game breaking news or something like that but i thought it was nice enough to just test and see what we're at if you run tests yourself please let me know in the comments and as i said the results it might not necessarily be 100 percent accurate because it is kind of harder to test in this game than it was in the previous one thank you for watching hope to see you next time please like and subscribe if you haven't already has helped me out a ton and i'll see you around next time bye bye